that's the rear entrance of the city. Big more painful we'll come to later. Essentially the front entrance of the city. Yeah, we're going down the shopping district here, or what was meant to be a shopping district, known as Piccadilly. It was named for London to Piccadilly. It was essentially meant to rival that area in terms of scale and size. Well, slightly failed in terms of uh, building a lovely metropolitan cluster shopping district like London to Piccadilly. Now we're quite managed. There's been some significant efforts to achieve the work that is in the area that's rejuvenated. On the right hand side you can see what is called the spa. It's a large um, rebuilt made out of sorry, recycled shipping containers. Essentially it's a tool that allows for new businesses to launch their new market. It allows for new businesses to trial uh, whatever they're making. And then some hopefully new support our place in the city. Lots of really lovely food available there. If you're looking for a bite to eat, I'd really recommend it. Especially if you're with a fussy family as well, because there's pretty much every type of food under the sun. Yeah. It's several success stories of Spartan. It's also apparently where like, Dick Turpin hold up for a while after he escaped from Essex and fled to New York. Uh, legend has it that the authorities surrounded the Red Lion Park, he managed to escape by jumping in, jumping out of the second floor window onto his horse and riding away right into the night. So again, this is another place that Dick Turpin walked to his into the night, jumping out that window onto his horse. He's a very busy ghost, he's got a lot of haunting to do. But this road we're turning onto now is called Warmgate, properly named after a Viking warrior princess, Warmba, or the gate towards Warmgate Street. It's the longest street within the city. Just behind the side of the shopping block, you might see another one of those cats. It's another original cat there as well. Keep your eyes open on those cats as you go around the city. There's just one on the right hand side, there's a golden one there's a golden one. On the right hand side, we're about to go past probably the most unlucky church in York. This is Dennis Watchwalkgate. It used to have a spire on the top, that spire was struck by lightning and knocked down. That spire, once it was in the spire, it was hit by Aaron Cannon fire, so the spire the cannon knocked the spire off again, and then we got that spire. There's an irrigation work to be done nearby, which undermined the foundations of the church, and that spire collapsed. And they've now cut their losses and given up on the spire. Turning left now back onto Piccadilly, and you can see it is not quite the um, bustling metropolitan I discussed earlier that we wanted it to be when it was built back in the 90s. Directly ahead of you, we have the new Oxford Street Boston Tower. You may see a shoot like a jetty out of the edge there. Thank you. 
Christmas does. You can see the map, the Irish heritage from here. Directly ahead of us is Warm Gate Bar. It's the most complete uh, gatehouse in the whole of the UK. In fact, you have to go as far as Krakow in Poland to find a gatehouse quite as complete as this. To the white uh, structure in the centre is an Elizabethan gatehouse built in the Queen of the Walls. And the two pillars that are holding it up are actually Roman pillars. Uh, we don't exactly know where they're coming from, save for the fact that we do know they are, in fact, definitely Roman pillars. The reason it's the most complete of all the medieval gatehouses is it still has its barbican attached. The barbican, as we turn right to be able to see, is this tunnel structure going into the wall. The section of walls are slightly stuck out here. The idea being is a form of secondary line of defence. You break through that first gatehouse and you get stuck in the barbican trying to get through the second gate. Once you're stuck in that barbican, 